state the principle of superposition. This is in the waves and superposition chapter now. So, why superposition? Ah? Nah, when you add together wave, one wave meets another wave. Oh, this wave is traveling this way, this wave is traveling this way. So their amplitudes or rather their displacement will add together when they come together. So we say when two waves overlap, two waves overlap, okay, what happens to them? Well, the resultant displacement of both waves add together, resultant displacement is the sum of individual displacement of each wave. Sum of displacements of each wave. And generally in superpositions, there are two ways where we will look at this idea. Lah. One is stationary wave. Very specific condition to form that. And the other one is just in 2D space. What is How do these waves add together? That's interference. That's pretty much the whole chapter. Lah. Stationary wave and interference. Anyway, here's two marks. One for when two waves overlap. Uh, resultant displacement is added when they overlap. Something like this. Okay, two marks for that. Let's look at this now. This is superposition, right? Oh, stationary wave. Here we go. A transmitter produces microwave that travel in air towards a metal plate. And it goes wow, 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 wow. The microwave have a wavelength of 0 0.04. That is our lambda. A stationary wave is formed between the plate and transmitter. You know why there's a stationary wave or not? So the, the microwave transmitter will first send out the, the, the initial pulse. Okay, this is what we call incident wave. So maybe it, can't, it travel, 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 travel until here. When it hit the plate, it will bounce back and reflect. So maybe it forms something like this. Wow, 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 wow. And these are traveling through each other. Lah. So we'll form a stationary wave pattern between the transmitter and the metal plate. Because there are two waves, the reflected and the incident wave adding together. Ne? Some two waves overlapping together under very specific conditions. So why we have a metal plate? So that you can reflect a wave or yeah, you will have incident wave traveling this direction. And if you have a metal plate, you can reflect. So reflected wave can travel back. So let's explain that in the first question. Explain the function. Well, uh, the plate acts as a... Oh, my pen is stuck. Give me a second. Hmm, we are back now. <laughs> so the metal plate acts as reflector to reflect uh, the transmitted wave and you can say like what transmitted wave so they overlap to form stationary wave but nah, this is the main idea of it lah. so b1 you talk about reflection so now you need to calculate the frequency of the microwave to find f you have only two equations it's either v equals to f lambda or f equals to 1 over t. They didn't mention anything about time period, so we don't have enough information for this. But we can use this. We know the wavelength and we know the speed of microwave. The speed of light. So this one, we sub in 3 times 10 to the power 8. Frequency? Don't know. We find first. La. Lambda is given to us up here. 0 0.040. So right here, 0 0.040. You will get a frequency of about 7.5 times 10 to the 9. Okay. Then we can write here 7.5 times 10 to the 9. Oh, but be careful. Wait, wait, wait. In gigahertz. Gigahertz. Why we need to write this? No, 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 no. Don't need to write that. Because here, your 10 times 10 to the 9 is in hertz. So you can rewrite this as gigahertz. So do not write a 10 to the 9. Be careful of your units. Check units. What is the answer line units? Once in a while they got a trap. So one mark here. One mark here if you find V equals F lambda, use the equation. And one mark if you substitute to find the correct value. And the last one you have to write in the correct unit, of course. Correct units. Okay, next part. So now your microwave initial microwave receiver is gonna be moved around. Is initially placed <clears throat> at position X where it tends, detects an intensity minimum. Uh, intensity minimum means what? Uh? 
this point in a stationary wave is what we call a node, where your amplitude is zero. No, no vibration there because all the waves keep on cancelling out at that spot. Then the receiver is slowly moved away from X towards the plate. Uh, towards the plate. Okay, understand. Determine the shortest distance of the receiver when it detects another node. Oh, so they're finding the shortest distance between nodes. So from node to node, what is the distance? How to find, ah? Uh? Maybe a diagram will help us a little bit here. Let's go to the picture again. I'm going to zoom this real big so we can get a good look. So you have a stationary wave here. And let me redraw this nicer and bigger. So let's say it looks like this. Lah. And your receiver, I'm going to redraw that again also. It's this alien looking shape. And you start off at X. And then you move it to a certain point, you come to another node. So what is the difference with the distance between here? So one node, you detect minimum. You move, you detect another minimum. Here is maximum, minimum. Maximum, minimum. So we are really finding what is the distance between two uh, loops or nodes, I guess we could call them. And these are nodes, N, N. Now this distance, is what we call one loop, ah, by the way. Distance between two nodes. This one loop is lambda over 2. How do we know that? Well, you kind of recognize. Ma. This is one full cycle. I mean, if you add the other side. So this whole thing is lambda. So one loop, two loops is lambda. So one loop is lambda over 2. Uh, they give us wavelength, right? So we can find the lambda over 2. So that's the first fact you want to write down in case you didn't know it before that the distance between two nodes aka one loop like this this distance is lambda over 2 so the distance nn is lambda over 2 i'm just gonna call it d la. lambda is 0 0.040 was it oh yeah 0 0.040 over 2 that gives us 0 0.02 so 0 0.02 is our answer. Um, please remember to write your 2 ah, because this needs to be 2 to 3 SF at least. You just put 0 0.02, mm, you might lose a mark right there. Here's a B1 mark for this. I think it's 1 right. Okay, part 2. So determine the intensity maximum they are detected as it moves from X to 9.1 cm. How many intensity maxima are there? This intensity maxima refers to NT nodes where the amplitude is the largest. So we know the distance between a loop. How many are there in total? La? Wow, how to know? Uh? Here's a shortcut. La. We we want to find in total 9.1 cm. How many loops? Is that what we call a loop? How many loops can fit inside 9.1? I don't know. We can try a little trial, trial and error here. So maybe we can do this. 9.1 divided by one loop is how much? Ah? One loop is lambda over 2, which is 0 0.02. Okay, this is the distance of one loop, aka node to node. This will give us an odd value of about 4.55. How do we know how many? Le? Well, if you do this calculation and you're really not sure, like, how do you proceed from here? Why don't you try draw it out? So, we think there's about 4 or 5. Should we round up or round down? We don't know. Okay, let's draw. So, let's go 1, 2, 3. Oh my goodness. My drawing 3. They're supposed to be the same size, lah, okay? 4, 5. Okay, let's stop here. Do some calculation, rough maths. So each loop is 2 cm. 0 0.02 is 2 cm. Ah. So here is 2 cm, 2 cm, here to here, here to here. So that's 2, 4, 
six, eight, ten. Oh, it's two cm, two cm, two cm, two. So you have nine point one will be somewhere two, four, six, eight. Until this point, you are at eight cm. Okay, here zero cm. If you go another step, that is ten cm already. Too much. So nine cm is somewhere here. 9 cm. So the closest are to 9.1 cm away from x. If this is position x, 9 cm away from x would be this position right here. So how many loops are there? We count on. Uh, how many loops are 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half? Oh, so that's what it means by 4 and a half. 4.5 is about 4 and a half loops. And this loops got how many anti note? Anti note, anti note. Anti note, anti note, and just nice one last anti note. So one, two, three, four, five, five anti notes, which are also known as intensity maxima. Okay. Oh, well, this question is very tricky. Go and brain this carefully again, lah. Okay. If you find a number and you're not sure, like what, what, what do I do? Four point five five. Hello. This is number of loops. It has to be a whole number. So you need to, if you're not sure whether to round up or down, draw it out. This is four and a half loops. One, two. Let's write the loops. One, two, three, four and a half loop. Okay, this one mark is for final answer. Uh, usually it's an A one mark for accuracy. Uh, I think that's two marks already, right? I guess this one is a B one if it's just a standalone. Okay, lah, B one. So one mark here, one mark here. All right, so that's all for this wave question. Make sure you know how to think of stationary wave, especially patterns like this. Uh, you need to know the math and especially the drawing of pattern and what are anti-notes, what are notes. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.